I'm very pleased to be here. And uh, I notice uh, that you have uh, recruited an uh, impressive list of speakers. I look forward to hearing different uh, perspectives on our common challenge and the energy transition uh, facing the world. We will hear the views uh, from the industry, academia, and the research communities. Last, but absolutely not least, I really look forward to interesting discussions with the students. There is a lot we do not know about our energy future, but we can be certain about one thing. In order to solve the challenges that lie ahead, we need to recruit the best young minds and talents. The students are the future of the energy industry. We face an enormous um, challenge. We must uh, produce enough energy for the world population that is growing. Something wrong? <laughs> OK. Is the microphone working? No? Yes? OK. Then I'm talking. Uh, as I said, we face an enormous uh, challenge with uh, uh, challenge. We must produce enough uh, energy for a world population, population that is growing. And we have to reduce the emissions of greenhouse gases. In 2050, there will be 10 billion people on our planet. They need reliable access to energy in order to work, to keep warm, to study, to cook, to travel, but simply a good standard of living is closely linked to access to energy. We needed an ambitious climate agreement in Paris. And we got it. The Paris Agreement means that the world is moving in a direction where low emission solution will play a much greater role. Both access to energy and curbing uh, greenhouse gas emissions are global challenges. They require global solutions. We all know where we have to go towards the low emission society, but our points of departure may vary. A transition of the energy system may mean different things in different places. Even in climate change, even if clim climate change is a global change, it affects different regions and countries in different ways. In a certain sense, Every country is unique. Norway's starting point sets us apart from almost every other country. There are, more, uh, there are many factors involved here. Geography, geology, lots of uh, resources, good decision making, and of course, some luck. In Norway, we are blessed with fantastic renewable energy resources, but globally, we are more known as an oil and gas producing country. Clearly, the petroleum resources have been very important for Norway. It has been a source of wealth for the state, for the people, and it has created employment opportunities across the country. And it will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. At the same time, nearly all our domestic power production comes from re renewable and flexible hydropower. In fact, we have a surplus production of uh, renewable energy, making us a net exporter of clean energy. Nearly all projections, projections indicate that Norway will enjoy a, 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 an abundance uh, of renewable energy for a long time to come. Because of this, 
The energy transition in the Norwegian context is more relevant in transport, industry and agriculture, and not in power generation as in most other countries. We have to look at how the energy is both produced and used, and make sure we do it as efficiently as possible. A robust an efficient power system is a precondition for a low carbon society. In this context, Norway has a head start. Then, what about um, oil and gas? Approximately half of the Norwegian emissions are covered by the ETS, the EU trading regime. This includes um, industry, aviation, and of course, the petroleum sector. Moreover, in 1991, Norway was one of the first countries in the world to introduce a carbon tax. Therefore, the oil companies on the Norwegian continental shelf has a strong incentive to reduce emissions from their activities. As a result, emissions from the Norwegian petroleum sector is lower on average than in other petroleum provinces. I believe the use of the price mechanism is the most effective way to achieve CO2 emission reductions. Efficient policies are crucial for success, and we need a framework that triggers the most cost-effective way to reduce emissions. This is working with the market, not against it. Speaking about markets, Norway is uh, closely connected to our neighbours, both our Nordic and continental neighbours. What matters for Europe matters for Norway, and I would argue that it works both ways. Norway is a partner for the energy transition um, uh, that is going on in Europe in several ways. First, we are a large and dependable supplier of natural gas to the European market. Norwegian producers, uh, production of natural gas covers almost 25% of gas consumption in the EU, making us the second largest exporter of uh, gas after Russia. And, as it was said, we will continue to be a large supplier for decades to come. Gas can contribute to decarbonization in two ways. As a reliable partner for renew renewable energy, especially for days and nights without sun or wind. And as a replacement for coal. This is a quick and cost-effective way to cut CO2 emissions. Coal is, after all, one of the biggest drivers on climate change. Second, Norway is also closely connected to the European power market. We have long-standing experience of power exchange in the Nordic countries. We will continue along, that, uh, along this path. New interconnectors to both Germany and UK are currently being built. They will allow for even more flexible power supply and will ensure efficient use of our resources and a better utilization of the energy systems. Again, I would like to highlight the importance of the market. Well-functioning and efficient European energy markets are vital for the clean energy transition. Market-based solutions and efficient price signals should remain the guiding principles of the energy markets. But even more simply, a green revolution, a green shift, cannot have a red bottom line. That is not sustainable over a long run. These are sound principles which should be a central part of our response to the energy transition ahead. At the same time, predicting the future can be really risky business. 
most of, most of the time, the only thing we can say quite safely is that we do not hold all the answers today. But I know this. New knowledge, research, and innovation are necessary. To reach our objective of a low emission society, we must successfully develop, adapt, and implement new technologies in several areas. Some might be minor improvements to, really, uh, to already existing technologies. Others may be truly groundbreaking and bold innovations. In any case, we need them all. And I, ex and, uh, and I expect that some of these solutions will come from uh, all the clever people working on these subjects right here in Trondheim, the technology capital of Norway. Research and technology development is a central priority of this government. I'm proud to say that we have significantly increased funding for energy research during our period in office. The funds available need to be used as efficiently as possible. That is why collaboration between the industry and academia is so important. The new centers uh, for environmentally friendly energy research, the FMEs, play a key role. They are in the, uh, in the forefront of our research and innovation efforts to create the energy system of the future. In this context, I would like to com uh, commend the NTNU and the entire Trondheim, Trondheim establishment for their valuable contributions. Excellent work has been done in the energy field. I trust that there is more to come. I have made the point that the energy transition is a global process. Our research and technology development efforts must follow suit. That's why Norway, along with 19 other countries, launched the mission Innovation during COP21 in Paris. The aim is to accelerate efforts to develop and use low-carbon technologies in order to achieve this. Uh, the countries will, at a minimum, double the public investment in research and development of environmental, environmentally friendly energy over five years. Innovation and research in energy is an essential part of a long-term global response to the joint challenge that climate change represents. One area where Norway can play a leading role is within research on carbon capture and storage. This is a key climate policy priority for this government. Achieving the climate targets without a massive deployment of uh, CCS will be much more difficult and much more costly. We work through the whole development chain. That means research, development, and demonstration, as well as large-scale CCS and international work. We work uh, the work going on at uh, the Technology Center Mongsta, nearby Bergen, to testify verify and demonstrate CO2 capture technologies is an important element of our work on CCS. Norway is doing our part in the global efforts to make CCS a viable option. However, we need more countries to step up, more companies to step up to achieve our targets. Before summarizing, I would like to make one more point that is especially re relevant as we are here in Trondheim. After researching and development comes demonstration and market entry. This is a crucial phase where many projects may, have, uh, may face challenges. 
This is exactly where the Trondheim-based state enterprise, Enova, has an important role to play. For more than 50 years, Enova has been one of our most important instruments for encouraging a Norwegian energy transition. From the beginning, they supported initiatives for energy efficiency and renewable energy. Technology implementation is a more recent, is, uh, is a more recent add on, and in 2015, the transport sector was also included. Here, the support for infrastructure for electric vehicles is crucial. But they also support many exciting projects to develop more climate friendly solutions for ships and ferries as well. The idea behind Innova is to support lasting market changes, making low and zero emissions, um, emission solutions competitive in the long run, also without support. Taken together, I believe that we have a strong set of measures to, in place to ensure the new technologies, that new te technologies are not only developed, but also find their way to the market. It's time for me to conclude. Climate change is a global challenge, which requires a global solution. We need to provide enough energy on one side for a world that demands enormous quantities, and we need to lower emissions. These challenges are interdependent. Individual countries or regions must take concrete steps to address this challenge. The steps needed in one country may not be appropriate in another. In other words, transition can and must mean different things in different places. As a large energy producing country, Norway is closely connected to our neighbors in Europe. We will continue to be a reliable partner and do our best to underpin energy transition in Europe. No matter how different our, uh, different our standing points may be, research and technology development will be essential in all aspects of energy transition. And many of you gathered here today will be part of the adventure. Thank you for listening, and good luck with the rest of the conference.